Greetings and welcome to the NPolio Now Zone Coordinator Training. You are all watching from home today and uh, we unfortunately would love to be together in person, but Rotary connects the world and right now we're doing so virtually during this time of our global pandemic. My name is Jennifer Jones and I am the co-chair of the NPolio Now Countdown to History campaign. And today I am going to be joined by two polio warriors who are going to provide us with an update on current information regarding polio, which quite candidly is more relevant and more important now than ever in this uh, era of this global pandemic. This morning, I am going to be joined by John Germ, past Rotary International President and the chair of our NPolio Now Countdown to History campaign, and Robert Hall, who is the vice chair of our campaign for club and district support. Gentlemen, I welcome you both, and I'm going to start this morning with a question with uh, past President John Germ. John, I would, I'd love for you to give us a, a bit of the current status, if you would, for where polio is right now in the world. Uh, thank you, Jennifer, and uh, thank all of our coordinators for all the hard work they're doing, because without their work within the districts, uh, we would not be able to accomplish our goal. You know, I think a little bit of history might be appropriate in the fact that uh, Rotary initiated this campaign uh, originally back in 1979 with uh, President Sir Clem Renoff asking the uh, Rotarians, is there something of the magnitude uh, of eradicating smallpox that he just read about that could be done uh, around the world. And so it started within the Philippines in 1979 with Rotary providing a $760,000 grant to vaccinate 6 million children uh, in the world. And th I mean, in the Philippines, and, and that really worked well. And so then in 1985, uh, Rotary took on the challenge of eradicating polio around the world. And it was interesting that back then that was an uh, a pandemic, just like we have right now with the COVID-19. Uh, and when we had over a uh, thousand cases a day, a thousand cases a day in 125 countries around the world. And today we're somewhat celebrating in the fact that we're down to three countries in the world, Afghanistan, Pakistan and Nigeria are the three endemic countries uh, that we have in the world right now. We're down to 40 cases. So we've reduced from over 350,000 cases a year to where we're down to 40 cases now. 99.9% .9 reduction because of the great work that Rotary and our partners are doing. So we've made a lot of accomplishments, but let me tell you, 40 cases is still way too many. And we think there will be more cases this year because of the uh, COVID-19 and some of the stuff that we have to uh, now divert our attention to, uh, not being able to reach some of the kids and stuff. So anyway, we're down to 40 cases. And I think that's quite an accomplishment from where we started. John, you mentioned, um, I mean, obviously polio being something that created a lot of fear for people. And right now we are at an unprecedented time in our global history where all of us are feeling a sense of fear, a sense of the unknown. And, um, you know, there's a lot of similarities, but polio um, is helping us with the COVID-19 uh, initiative, um, helping to shut it down. What is it doing for our polio eradication efforts? I know we've had to put things on the back burner in terms of immunizations, but how is COVID helping us? Well, I think that we have to go back and think about there's this polio, polio plus. And part of the polio plus is the surveillance system that we have put in place. It's the laboratories that we put in place. And if we think back just a few years ago, we had a, a crisis with uh, Ebola. And it was the polio workers and the labs and the surveillance systems that we had that helped, uh, helped stop Ebola uh, much quicker than it would have been if otherwise. So what's happening now is the same thing, is our polio workers are being trained in order to help recognize the symptoms of this COVID-19. We cannot go door to door. That's the negative side of it, because I, obviously the similarity between these two is the fact that it's carried in a, a human body and it's a transferable person to person. So we have to stop 
and come back with our door-to-door uh, -door campaigns. And if you think about Afghanistan and Pakistan and Nigeria, now Nigeria has not had a case since two, August of 2016. So hopefully in June, uh, they will be declared polio free and the whole African con continent will be polio free. But if you go look at what was happening in Nigeria, Afghanistan, and Pakistan, a lot of remote villages, and some of us have been to those remote villages, and they don't have electricity, they don't have running water, they don't have a lot of the things that we think about. Well, the only way you can get those drops, those children, is person to person. So we've had to pull that back. But by the same time, those workers are still out there helping to identify. The surveillance systems are still in place. The laboratories are still in place. And I think it's something that what we've put into polio is really helping with this COVID-19. It's really trying to move this thing forward, but we can't lose our momentum on polio either. We still have to say that we must eradicate polio. We promised the children of the world we would do that and we will do it. John, you know, I think that um, it's such a, an opportunity for us to, um, particularly as we speak with the NPOLIO Now Zone coordinators, both the current and the incoming, um, to, to send out that message to all of you to talk with Rotarians in the field about polio being a point of pride right now. And because of this public health infrastructure that we have, that we really are able to make these great strides. So it's a great talking point. I think for all of us right now, as we're talking with Rotarians. So where we are, that's what I want to know next, John, um, our end polio now fundraising progress and our goals to date, bring us up to speed. Well, that's a very interesting uh, question because it varies uh, di daily, you know, as far as coming, the funds coming in and what we're trying to do. Uh, many people remember that uh, we, signed a new agreement with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to whereas if Rotary commits $50 million a year, then the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation will give us $100 million a year, all of which is to be spent on polio. Well, you stop and think and say $150 million a year. Well, let me just say it takes $900 million per year in order to continue to vaccinate 430 million children a year that we have to vaccinate because we have to reach every child until there is no more polio. We still have to do surveillance in 70 countries a year. That takes funds in order to do that. We have to buy a vaccine. We have to pay for operational costs. So right now, Rotary is at, for this uh, year, we're at $31 million. So we still have a need of $19 million, which from an engineer standpoint, that's $6.33 million a month that we have to raise in order to meet our challenge with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We have met that challenge every year since we started. Started back in 2007 with a $100 million challenge. Then it went to $35 million a year. And so now we're at $50 million a year. All of those are increases when you think about it. The $100 million was spread over a period of time. We made that. We continue to give from the heart. We continue to give what COVID is gonna do. We don't know yet, but we do know that it takes both. We have to, to, uh, to eradicate both of these diseases. One we have a vaccine for, the other we do not. So let's raise our $50 million, but we're 31 million of that 50 right now, and we're making progress. Thanks, John. So it's a big challenge. And for those of you who are in the field, uh, all of our coordinators here, um, it's a big challenge that we need to uh, we need to address raising 50 million by June 30th of uh, of this year, just in a couple of months time. So we've got a lot, a lot to tackle. Um, and one of the guys who is a gentleman who is helping us with that is Robert Hall. As I mentioned, he is the vice chair of club and district support for the end polio now campaign. And Robert, I'm going to call you on here right now to uh, talk about how the, uh, the coordinators who are on the call with us today, how are they going to be able to help that we get to that $50 million by the end of the year? Cause it's going to be, it's going to be a uphill battle. Um, but one that I know they're up to Robert. Well, I want to thank you, Jennifer, you and John both for having me on here with you. I, uh, I think back to our 1920 EPNCs who are viewing this, 
And I think about last year, about this time, we said we could be four million short. We're projecting a shortfall of no way. And you made it. And and I'll hand it to you. You were the leaders that helped your districts and zones make it. And in fact, I know it carried forward into this year, the 1920 year from what you did in 1819. So that was strong. You know, if you're a 2021 EPNC, that you too are going to have plans set in place. We're asking you to do that by June the 15th with your team leaders. And as you know, we have 10 teams with 10 team leaders and they're working with you to do this and they'll be having call up calls with you to do this. So we'll get off to a great fast start in 2021. Uh, the 1920, uh, 1819, we had a best three months we've ever had in our history raising money for polio. And I think we need to do, you've heard what John said, you've heard Jennifer, clubs are going to be trying to help their communities. We don't want to beat them up, in my opinion, and I've talked to many of you, give more and more and more cash because they want to help their communities, showing them how what we've done in polio, the infrastructure that's been talked about, how that helps get rid of Ebola, that'll help get rid of coronavirus, and we want them to give money to support their communities, to first liners, et cetera. But what we do see, and many of you are telling me can make a big difference, is the DDF that's sitting out there. That many districts, and we're gonna send you a report that shows the districts, and some districts have over $100,000 sitting there when they came to this year that is still unused. And so somebody told me the other day, one of the EPNs, they said, you know, this is not a savings account. And some of our districts, I think it's a savings account. And he said, my district has a lot of DDF. And one of our other districts in our country, two districts in that country have a lot of DDF, where the other districts I work with maybe have $5,000. We are going to help the districts that don't have a lot of money by using more of our DDF. And you know it, this year the World Fund is matching one-to-one. -one. So when you talk to a district about giving 10000 in DDF, that's $60,000 by the time the World Fund and Gates matches that. So I would ask you to, to look at this year and try to help your clubs understand and your Rotarians what is being given and then try to help the district leadership know that they can help make it up with DDF. I'll just say this, that I saw the other day, I did not realize it, and you may not know it, and we're going to send you a report, you can look at it, that only 59% of our districts have given to polio. 59%. And I think it's 9%, John can correct me, 5 or 9% of the Rotarians they've even given. Let's just say it's 9%. You know, I talked to a district governor earlier this year, and she commented to me, some of our district, or some of our members are 30, 40 years old. They don't even know what polio is. So the job of the district governor, I told her, and the job of the EPNC is to help make your people aware, your Rotarians aware, that is something we must eradicate. If you can increase that 9%, and if you can increase that 59%, and you can get this DDF, we can make the $50 million. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Robert. Robert let me uh, let me pop in if you don't mind yeah. uh, this conversation we're having. Robert brought up the fact about DDF. I asked for a report the other day that said how many districts have over one hundred thousand dollars of DDF sitting in a bank account that's not being allocated and not being used. And then I said if I took those number those districts that have over $100,000 and add that up, what's it total? $32.8 million. Some districts have as much as $900,000 of unallocated DDF. But when you got $32.8 million, yeah, we need the cash, but there is money that's already in a bank, Rotarians have already given to be used for humanitarian services that is not being used. So, Robert is exactly right. People are concentrating on COVID right now. People are hurting. Hospitals are hurting. People are being laid off. People have lost their jobs. We've got to go after this DDF to say, Rotarians gave the money for humanitarian purposes and it is not being utilized. 
So Robert, very good point to bring that out right now. And it is a little over 9% of the Rotarians that give to polio. 9%. And you're right. Sox vaccine was approved on April the 12th of 1955. We got we lose 100,000 Rotarians a year. We gain 100,000 Rotarians a year. The ones we are gaining mostly are the younger Rotarians, which is who we need, but they're also the ones that we don't have, that are not educated and don't know that much about polio. So we've got an education process to do too. Well, I think one of the things, John, that we're going to see in the weeks and months to come is certainly, you know, we've talked for years about the fact that polio is only a plane ride away. And as you talk about the younger demographic that has never heard of polio before, um, hearing about a global pandemic, living through a global pandemic, certainly changes, I think, our awareness about the need to make sure that when we're looking at a disease with vaccines that are available, like for polio, that, uh, that we do take action. One of the things I wanna share with everyone is that uh, at the International Assembly this year, your district governors elect heard a very robust session on end polio now. And they left armed uh, knowing that they had goals in place and challenges in front of them. Uh, clearly the, uh, the COVID-19 situation provides an even greater challenge. And as John and Robert have said, we need to take care of uh, what's in front of us right now before we move on. But we do need to set goals and we do need to look ahead to what we expect to do next year. Uh, we need to get across the finish line this year, which is first and foremost, the most important. But John, I want you to tell us what are the, the fundraising goals for this upcoming year for 2021? I know it's probably like looking in a crystal ball right now because um, we, we don't know necessarily day to day what uh, what our world has in store for us. So, but uh, for the sake of stability and, and for planning purposes, what are our goals for 2021? Well, actually, Jennifer, it's uh, very simple, $50 million. Uh, we have a contract with the Gates Foundation that if we do, as I said earlier, that if we do 50 million, commit $50 million, then they will give us $100 million. We have to do that in order to fulfill this $900 million gap. Now, the unfortunate part about it is with COVID, we don't know how much longer this is going to be. Uh, we did say that originally that it was going to be a three-year commitment. Uh, my commitment, and I think Rotarian's commitment around the world is we're going to continue to do this as long as it takes in order to eradicate polio. No child should ever be crippled or die when we have a vaccine that works. COVID, we don't have a vaccine. It is being worked on. It probably take another year or so to get a vaccine that's approved. What's gonna be the next virus after that that we've got to tackle? This one, we know we have a vaccine that will wipe it out. And we, we're just wrong if we don't reach this $50 million to help do Rotary's part on a project that we started. We own it. We've got to be persistent. We've got to be proud of the work we've done, but we've got to be patient. It's not going to be happen overnight. So our goal, long answer, $50 million to get $100 million. You can't beat a deal like that. Well, it's not a long answer. It's the right answer. We need to hunker down and we need to uh, make sure that we're focused on the uh, the end game. Um, I'm going to just put you on the spot, John, for a second. You, you mentioned the Gates funding, and uh, we did have uh, a message from Bill Gates in January at the International Assembly renewing their commitment, um, as has been mentioned, to our, our, our match. Um, the Gates have been stepping up. Uh, their foundation to also really put their efforts into COVID right now. What message would you send to uh, the our coordinators who are listening and most importantly to Bill Gates right now in terms of the kind of superpower that they're putting behind uh, vaccinations and disease prevention? Well, first of all, you know, the Gates Foundation came on board in November 2007 uh, with Rotary. And uh, they have been stalwart in their support of what we are trying to do. And Bill Gates, uh, anytime you're with him or his staff or anything, they are working tirelessly in order to help us eradicate polio. 
And they know that we have to eradicate polio for the world to believe that we can eradicate any uh, virus. So they have worked extremely hard on that. They have not wavered in their support of the eradication of polio, even though they are working very hard on doing the uh, COVID. As a matter of fact, the Gates Foundation is uh, currently funding outside of the GPEI, outside of our goal of the 900 million to eradicate polio, they're actually funding the development of a new vaccine to help eradicate polio from those individuals that have the vaccine derived polio. They get, they get that. So they're coming up with another vaccine in order to do that. And it's being tested right now. So the Gates Foundation is not wavering at all. They are supporting us in every way they can. Uh, they have put people on the ground in Nigeria. They put people on the ground in Afghanistan and Pakistan in order to have their own field workers there. So they are true partners in this, as long with WHO, uh, UNICEF, CDC, and Gavi, the Gex, uh, Vaccine Alliance uh, Program. So our partners are there. Why aren't we there? We should be there just as strong as they are. And I say personally, thanks to Bill Gates for stepping up. Thanks for Bill Gates and his staff and the amount of funds that they're spending not just in donating to WHO and to UNICEF, but helping us meet our goals because they know that when Rotary makes a commitment, Rotary keeps its commitment. Thank you, John. I'm uh, going to go back over now to uh, Robert. We're going to get into a little bit of the sort of tactical side of this conversation. And Robert, I'm going to start with this question. What is the purpose of the Enfolio Now uh, team? and the team leader. What is what is the purpose of this role, this job, and what do they need to be able to achieve? Well, number one, when I took this job, or John Jerry asked me to work on polio for another 80 years. No, not really. But uh, continue with him, and uh, I love working with John. I said, what is the purpose that I'm going to, I'm the vice chair, and I have these 41 polio co coordinators around the world that I work with, and and uh, I really can't communicate with 41 people. I, I knew I couldn't. So the first thing we did is we created 10 teams with 10 very experienced and polling out coordinators around the world. So the job of the polio coordinator, you, is to provide leadership, making your districts, your zones, your RFC teams aware that we cannot stop and we must eradicate polio. That pure and simple is your main role. Awareness, we continue to eradicate and leadership. The role of the team leader is a resource and a coach to you. And I tell the team leaders, I do communicate with them and I communicate with you some, but I communicate with them saying, I want you to, number one, be a coach, have conference calls with your people and always, always be available. It doesn't say you call everybody every day, but you're always available whenever the polio coordinator on your team has a question, you're the go-to person. And that's the same thing the polio coordinator I expect to be for the zone and for the districts you're involved in. So when I look at what the terms of reference that you have, there are 12 items on there. But I said to myself, I can't remember 12 things when I talk. You probably can't remember 10, 12 things from what I say right now. So I want to boil it down to three things. One is you be a resource, always available resource for polio questions to your districts, always. Number two, you get results. You know, nobody pays for activity. You're not getting paid, I know, but people don't work for activities, they work for results. And the results I look forward to are number one, getting DDF increased or 20% and looking at the list we're gonna send those districts that have is as a savings account that can help those districts that don't have it. Number two, I look at the 59%, which I mentioned before, and I would expect you to look at your districts and increase the clubs that give. I'd love to see Stella Roy tell me one time that one of the EPNCs and Stella will be watching this. She had a district that every club gave something. That would be phenomenal if every club in your district gave something. And then the 9% of Rotarians, 
Wow. You know, John said it, Jennifer said it. I just don't understand why people don't know about this. But I know my grandkids all know because we showed them a video when we went to India a long time ago. And they know what this is. But, you know, somebody 30 or 40 doesn't know. So help them know what it is, create their awareness, get the results, improve the Rotarian giving. And the last thing I'd say is your personal gift. If you've already made a personal gift this year or plan to make one next year, if you're a 2021 PM, say, or if you're this year, your personal gift is important. The first time I asked a person to make a major donor gift of $10,000, you know what the person asked me? Are you a major donor? So if you ask somebody to make a gift to Polio Plus, they might ask you, have you made a gift? The second thing is that I do believe in getting two major gifts, which is what you're being asked to do, is important. I will bet you that somebody in your district, that somebody in my district I know, that I thought he gave and his wife gave because they were dying to eradicate polio. Well, that was important. But the most important thing he told me, if I give 10000 with Gates' gift, it becomes 30000 So there might be a person that can make a major gift out there and uh, I'd ask you maybe to, to look for that person. So communicate with your district. Continue to create a word. People are looking for programs. Offer to be a program to a district or a club on Polio Plus. Zoom programs are all going on over the world. So that's what I'd like to ask you to do. And, and I know you've done it. We'll continue to do it. And uh, if you get any questions of your team leader or me, let me know. Thanks, Jennifer. Hey, Robert. Hey. Let me inter- Jennifer, let me interrupt again because one of the things that we did send out and that the EPNCs can certainly utilize, we did two videos uh, last year uh, talking about uh, polio eradication and why we should be doing polio eradication and why we should get rid of it. Both it, links to those videos were sent to all of the club presidents. Now, those club presidents can have a Zoom meeting and they can insert that link in there and they can... Uh, distribute it that way. One of them is 10 minutes, one's about 15 minutes. So you can make a whole program with those videos. We have a lot of tools available for the EPNCs to utilize with the uh, club presidents, the district governors. We just got to use them. And those two videos are very good about why we should eradicate polio. Good point. Thank you, John. Thank you, Robert. Uh, you know, one point I'd want to expand on Robert, that you mentioned is the communication aspect. And I, I think back to when I was in a coordinator role years and years ago and and uh, or even at a district governor level and wondering, you know, information would come to me and it's like, OK, do I have permission to go out and do this? Um, should I be asking for permission to communicate or to create um, some kind of awareness? You have full permission. And, you know, it is your job to get out there and to be talking with people and to be raising awareness and, uh, you know, thinking outside the box. And right now is going to be one of the most um, incredible times in our history to try and get creative and think outside of the box. So it brings me, uh, Robert, to uh, one of our last questions, and that is how does the this team, the EPNCs, how do they work with our EMGAs, our RFCs, our RCs, our RPICs? Um, how do they how do they work with them to make sure there's a coordinated message and and what are they trying to um, convey to them? So I, I think that's a great question. In fact, some of the RFCs uh, have said, and some of you have said to me that we really don't communicate that well. We re- are we really a member of this team? And the RFC says, "Who's the EPNC?" The EPNC might say, "Who's the RFC?" You know, that's not great. That what you are a key member of the team and the RFC and the ARFCs ought to be looking to you to provide the information on Polio Plus, to be the resource. The other thing I remember when I was in in a sales capacity with IBM, I used to think about at first, before I really got to know what I was doing, how, how can they help me? How can they help me make my quota? Well, then I started thinking about how can I help them run their business? And so if you look at your RFC and your ARFCs and you look at the districts, how can I help them be successful? John Jerem was president of Rotary in 2017. So my job as chair of the 2017 host committee in Atlanta was to make John Jerem happy. 
That was my job. And so think about your RFC. Go to that person. Make sure they know who you are. Communicate, communicate, communicate. And tell them, I want you to do a great job. Here's my role in your team. And here's how I can help you. So I think you are a key member of the team. And uh, I think you need to work closely. And they probably like to communicate with you more than you know they would. So uh, go ahead and make the effort. Uh, the two things I heard the other day, and uh, you'll see this, um, that somebody said about being persistent. I think persistence is everything. But also there's two words right now. And it's mostly pro true with COVID, but also with polio. Be persistent and be patient. That I know if I say if I had more time, I could be patient. Well, the thing is really be persistent, but be patient. We're not achieving this overnight, and this is something we'll achieve in the long term. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. We're uh, we're going to get close to wrapping up here, and I want to open the floor to both of you to uh, to answer our final question. Uh, but in particular, I, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a challenging a challenging year. It's going to be probably a challenging couple of years, and coming into or being in a fund development role right now um, couldn't be probably any more challenging. So, what's the best way for members of our uh, EPNC group here to show their commitment to polio eradication? Uh, Robert, I'll start with you, and then John, I'll, I'll throw it over to you. So, what's the best way for our team to show their commitment to uh, to polio eradication, Robert? I think if you show your commitment, if I want to know that you are committed and showing your commitment, I'd go to the RFC, and I'd say, "Do you know your EBNC?" Is your EPNC the go-to person on your team for polio? And I want them to say yes, that whoever it is, me, Ann, or Bob, or Ray, they are the go-to person. I can depend, rely on them. They're responsive to me. They help me succeed. They're great. Thank you, Robert. John, same question. How can they show their commitment to polio eradication? Well, I'll take a little bit different approach. And I, I guess I've been raising money for many years for a very different uh, project, whether it be the March of Dimes or the Heart Association, Lung, Arthritis, uh, you name it, I think I've raised money for it. But I always start with one simple question. Am I committed? And before I accept a job, whether it be the United Weight Campaign Chairman or anything, am I going to make my own personal contribution? Because if I'm not going to make my own personal contribution, how can I ask someone else to make a contribution when I haven't proved I believe in it yet. So number one, I think that everybody has to give their own personal gift, regardless of what amount of money that is. Uh, just as I spoke to the trustees and said, you've got to make your personal gift. Mm -hmm. So number one, I think you got to make your personal gift. Number two, I think we have to realize that if we do not accomplish this goal, that we're going to have over 200,000 children that's going to be affected uh, by polio if we don't complete our job. Well, that's 200,000 children. We don't need to be crippled. We have to realize also there's an, a financial impact. If we can eradicate polio, we're going to save somewhere around nine to $10 billion a year. That's a lot of money that we're going to be saving around this world. So look at it from the standpoint, am I going to be part of the bigger picture? Am I willing to put up my resources? And am I willing to help educate others to put up their resources? So I think that's what we need to do, Jennifer. Thank you, John, and thank you, Robert. I uh, truly appreciate the discussion that we've been able to have today to be able to uh, bring a little bit of light uh, into the situation that we're in right now in terms of not only uh, being in the midst of a global pandemic, but also uh, how to keep our focus on uh, our number one corporate priority, the eradication of polio. I know that many of you will have questions in the days and weeks to come, and you can be anticipating a lot of information from Claire Monroe to be arriving in your inboxes that will help to uh, further provide you with uh, tools to be able to do your job well. Um, with regard to questions, I know that Robert, John, myself, Claire, any of us are available to any of you anytime to answer uh, anything, to provide you with guidance, information, even help you out with programs. So please don't hesitate to ask if those are things that would be of benefit to you as you're crafting your plan for the year ahead. 
I want to thank John and Robert for their leadership in, uh, in our campaign. And I also want to thank each of you for your leadership. Uh, you are bringing exceptional leadership to the forefront of our most important initiative. And because of you, we will get the job done. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being on our call today. Thank you for uh, being Rotarians, being leaders in our organization, and for doing uh, the best job that, you, that you're doing now. I wish you all uh, a safe day, a healthy day, and uh, stay inside and, and uh, love, your, love your loved ones. Anyway, take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank all the EPNCs for the hard work they're doing. Absolutely. Take care.